welcome to the third lesson of the sixth module which is on stresses in beams part 3. In fact, in the last two lessons on this particular module, we have discussed aspects of the bending stresses in beams. Now, in this particular lesson, we are going to look into some more aspects of the stresses and in fact, we will be looking into the effect of the searing stress in beams. So, uh, it is expected that once this particular lesson is completed, one should be able to understand the concept of shear stress in beams of rectangular cross section. One should be able to derive the shear formula, the formula for evaluating the uh, shearing stress in a beam subjected to loads and one should be in a position to evaluate shear stress in beams of rectangular cross sections for different loadings. Hence, the scope of this particular lesson includes, uh, well, we will recapitulate the previous lesson, we will look into some aspects of the lessons which we have discussed uh, in the last one. Concept of shear stress in beams of rectangular cross section, uh, derivation of equation for shear stress in beams and examples for evaluation of shear stresses in beams. We will be looking into some examples through which uh, we know how to compute the value of the shearing stresses in a beam which is subjected to load. Now, let us look into the questions which were posed last time. Now, what is the impact of bending stress in arriving at a size of a beam? Now, if you remember last time we had discussed in the last lesson that uh, the flexural formula or the bending formula uh, is given by this particular expression that sigma is equals to uh, sigma is equals to minus m y by i, uh, which is written over here. Now, as you know, m is the bending moment, y is the point at which we are trying to evaluate the stress and the distance from the neutral axis, i is the uh, moment of inertia. Now, when we are talking about the symmetrical section, as you know, that uh, neutral axis will be lying at the, uh, will be dividing the section in two halves and the stresses at the compression or at the tension because of the positive bending moment will be of the same magnitude. And hence, uh, forgetting about the sign, we have written as absolute value of the maximum bending moment uh, times y by i. Now, from this particular expression, uh, if you look into uh, sigma is the stress which is allowed in this particular member or the it is a material characteristics. That means, that if we know the allowable stress of that particular material, then we know how much stress limit of that particular section. Now, m max the maximum bending moment can be evaluated from the uh, external loading that is acting on the beam member and we have seen how to calculate the uh, bending moment at different sections and if we draw the bending moment diagram, then we can know at which location the maximum bending moment is occurring. So, we know m max, we know sigma. Now, these two parameters i and y basically they are dependent on the cross sectional shape of the particular beam member. So, i by y, i is the moment of inertia and y is the distance uh, of the point where we are evaluating the stress uh, from the neutral axis which is y. Now, this i by y is nothing but equals to m max by sigma. Now, m max we know from the loading, sigma we know from the material allowable stress. So, we can get the value of i by y and from this particular numerical value of i by y, we can select a particular section uh, and this particular parameter i by y generally we designate by z. So, if we can select a member of this z value, then uh, if we go for a section which is uh, have which has higher z value than z required, then the section will be able to withstand the uh, bending moment that is occurring because of the load. So, that means, if we select a member which has the i by y value is larger than we are getting from this expression m by sigma, then the member will be in a position to withstand this particular load. But if we provide a section for which the z value is less than i by y, then naturally the stress level will go beyond the uh, capability of that particular material and the, uh, the member will fail. Now, if the member is unsymmetrical with respect to x axis as we had discussed last time, 
supposing if we have a cross section which is something like this, which is symmetrical with respect to y axis, but unsymmetrical with respect to x axis, then this y values will be different from the neutral axis for two ends and this we can designate as y 1 and y 2 and correspondingly we will have two values of uh, i by y we can call one as z 1 which is equals to i by y 1 other one will be z 2 which is i by y 2. Now, smaller the value of y y 1 or y 2 uh, as having the same i we will have the larger value of z and we will have to see corresponding to the higher value of z if we choose a particular section then that particular section will be able to withstand the stress. So, we will have to decide whether it is a symmetrical section or unsymmetrical section with respect to x axis accordingly we will have to find out the value of i by y and correspondingly we will have to select a particular section which satisfy this particular requirement. So, this bending stress has a great impact in selecting a particular sectional configuration of a member where uh, we will have to find out the size. Now, the next question is what is the relation between curvature and the bending stress in a beam. Now, this is uh, a very straightforward question and I think you know the answer of it. This is uh, we have seen the bending equation which is m by i is equals to u by rho equals to sigma by y where m is the bending moment, i is the moment of inertia, e is the modulus of elasticity, rho is the radius of the axis of the beam, sigma is the bending stress and y is the distance of the point where we are evaluating the stress from the neutral axis and sig sigma mind that is a normal stress which is getting generated because of the bending in the particular section. So, now if we relate the stress with the curvature that means if we take this particular relationship E by rho uh, is equals to minus sigma by y then we get this that sigma is equals to minus E y by rho and y by rho as you know that we have termed this as kappa this is curvature. So, this is how the stress is related to the curvature through this parameter E and y and this we can evaluate at a particular point with respect to the neutral axis. Now, the third question was the what is meant by section modulus. Now, in the course of discussion over here. Uh, we have uh, defined the term in fact uh, we have said that z is a parameter which is i by y. In fact, this is what we call as section modulus the ratio of moment of inertia of the section to the extreme fiber distance from neutral axis of the section is known as the section modulus. So, if i is the moment of inertia and y let us call this as y max which is the extreme distance from the neutral axis of the uh, outer fiber then i by y max is uh, equals to the z the section modulus of a particular section which we decide from the bending moment and the stress. Well, uh, then having known this as we have seen uh, in the previous two lessons that we have computed the values of the bending stress that means a beam member when they are subjected to a stress resultant which is a bending moment for that we could evaluate what is the value of the normal stress because of such bending. Now, uh, as you have noticed that a beam member when they are subjected to loads not only they are subjected to the bending moment, but uh, the at uh, locations they are subjected to the shear forces also. Now, a places for some loading where it is exclusively bending moment then corresponding stresses which we get are the bending stresses but in some zones where the bending is associated with shear force as well there we got to compute the value of the normal stress through the bending equation as we have done as well as we need to evaluate the value of the shearing stress as well. Now, in this particular relation we are going to look into how to compute the value of the shearing stress at a particular location where we know the value of the shearing force for the external loading that the member is subjected to. Now, uh, let us look into this particular figure wherein uh, we have taken a part of the beam segment uh, which is subjected to the loading. Now, this is the shear force positive shear force acting on this particular phase and this member is of rectangular cross section having a depth h and width b. Now, 
we assume two aspects over here. One is that shear stresses act on a cross section and are parallel to the shear force. That means, at a particular section where we have the shearing force, we assume that the shear stress is parallel with the shear force in that particular cross section. It is also assumed that the shear stresses are uniformly distributed across the width of the beam. It is reasonable to assume that across the width of the beam, the shear stress is uniform. However, the, there could be variation of the shear stress along the depth of the beam, but at a particular point along the width, we assume that the shear stress is uniform. So, we assume two aspect. One is the shear stress, direction of shear stress we assume is in line with the shearing force which is acting at a particular cross section and the distribution of the shear stress is along the width is uniform. Now, if we do that, then say for example, if we take out a small segment from this particular beam, then we get the segment something like this. This is the segmental uh, size which is here. Now, along the width, the shear stress is uh, uniform as we have uh, assumed at the moment. And so, in the horizontal direction, we will have the complementary shear as we have noticed earlier that if we take a section, if we have a vertical shear, then we have a horizontal shear as well, which we call as a complementary shear. Now, if we look into this particular uh, elements, the small element which we have exaggerated. Now, this is the shearing stress, positive shear stress which we have on the vertical face. Consequently, we have the horizontal shearing stress which is the complementary shear stress. Now, uh, please note one point over here that if we take this particular element say closer to the top surface. Now, on this particular surface on the top surface, there is uh, no other element hence the shearing stress on the top surface is 0. So, uh, at the top point, since the horizontal shear stress is 0, so the vertical shear stress at the extreme ends also are 0. So, at the top and at the bottom, the shearing stress is also equals to 0 at plus minus h by 2, the shearing stress is 0. Now, uh, let us evaluate that what is the magnitude of the shearing stress in terms of the sectional parameters. Now, before we really go into the evaluation of the shearing stress, you can uh, think of a small experiment, a simple experiment that we take a number of small beams which are supported uh, on supports and these beams individually they are resting one after another and we apply a load on to top of this particular beam. It is expected that it is undergoing a deformation in this particular form as it is shown over here and since they are not, not connected with each other. Now, the bottom part of this particular top beam will be undergoing a extension or the tension. The top fiber of this particular beam will be under compression. So, there is expected to be some amount of slippage and since uh, if we say that the frictional resistance is small, then there will be a substantial change in the length between these two surfaces. Now, this indicates that uh, if supposing if we could uh, hold all these three segments together by some means by application of a glue or by nailing, then the whole system would have act in, as one unit. Now, this indicates that that some amount of stresses are acting at the interface between these element and this is what is the shear, horizontal shear stress which retains these three segments together if they are tied together and they can uh, resist the load in terms of the stresses. Now, let us look into how do we compute the value of the shearing stress in a beam. Now, we consider a segment of the beam which is loaded and let us say these are the two sections at a distance of uh, d x. Uh, let us call this section as a a and this as b b and on face a a uh, we have this uh, shear force V and the bending moment M. On the right face, we have shear force V plus d V and moment as M plus d M. We expect that from A A to B B over d x distance as we move, uh, there is a change in the shear force and the bending moment. Now, if we separate out this particular element and look into the stresses in that. Now, this is the stress distribution which is shown. Uh, this is corresponding to the bending stress, they are the normal stress that is acting in the beam. 
and uh, here we have considered the moment part only m and m plus d m. Uh, there will be stresses because of the shearing action as well, but since we are uh, interested at this moment to compute the value of the horizontal shear stress, uh, let us uh, keep the vertical shear stress apart. So, we are looking into only the stress because of the bending moment only. Now, if we consider a small segment of this particular beam which is at a distance of let us say y 1 from, uh, from this particular neutral axis. Then if we separate out this particular segment and look into the stresses, the stress distribution will be something like this that here we have the normal stress which is getting generated because of the bending moment m plus d m. On this side you have the normal stresses which is getting generated because of the bending moment m and at this particular section uh, or the cross section of this particular member, we will have a horizontal shear which is acting at this phase. Now, there are vertical shear on these phases which we are not accounting at the moment. Now, the cross section of the beam at this particular section, section A A is like this where the width is B and depth is uh, H. And the distance from the neutral axis is h by 2 and we are considering a section which is at a distance of y 1 from the neutral axis. So, this is the section which we are looking into and so is the section at b b uh, is a rectangular one having width b and depth h the same configuration and we are considering this particular segment. Now, if we consider a small area d a then the force which will be acting is equals to sigma times d a and this sigma we can compute from the expression as we have learned in terms of the bending. Since we are considering only the bending moment acting in this particular section, so the stress sigma due to bending is equals to m y by i which we have uh, looked into into the flexural equation. So, on this side this particular force f 1 will be the stress multiplied by the area of this particular segment and on this side the force F 2 will be the stress which is generated because of m plus d m multiplied by this segmental area which will give us F 2. So, in this particular element we have force F 1, we have force F 2 and we have force F 3. So, if we take the equilibrium of these uh, forces in the horizontal direction we have f 1 minus f 2 minus f 3 they are equals to 0. Now, let us look into that how do we calculate this f 1, f 2 and f 3. Now, here you note that the force f 1 is getting generated because of the bending moment m. So, m y by i multiplied by the elemental area d a and the segment is from y 1 up to h by 2. So, this gives us the value of f 1. Likewise, the value of f 2 is equals to integral minus of m plus d m times y by i multiplied by d a and again it is integrated from y 1 to h by 2. So, this gives us the value of f 2. Now, if we write down the equilibrium equation which is uh, f 1 minus f 2 minus f 3 equals to 0 and thereby it gives us f 3 is equals to f 1 minus f 2 and f 3 is the force which we are trying to find out. So, if we substitute for f 1 and f 2 this is uh, f 1 is minus integral y 1 to h by 2 m y by i times d a minus and minus minus plus integral y 1 to h by 2 m plus d m y by i d a and this is equals to f 3. Now, if we uh, this m y by i gets cancelled, so we are left with d m by i uh, y 1 to h by 2 integral y d a and this particular parameter integral y d a we uh, designate as q, q as equals to integral y d a and in this particular case it is from y 1 to h by 2 and 
f 3 as you can uh, observe from the previous one that f 3 is acting at the section of this particular beam segment, wherein the width of the beam is equals to b and the length we have considered as d x. So, we have taken the d x segment from the beam of width b. So, the area over which the shear is uniformly distributed is equals to b times d x. So, if tau is the shearing stress, then the force that is acting at that particular cross section is tau times b times d x stress multiplied by the area. So, f 3 that is why it is written as tau times b d x and hence if we equate these two, uh, we get a relationship between the shearing stress and the moment. Tau b d x is f 3, this is equals to d m y i integral y 1 to h by 2 y d a, which we are designating as q. So, tau basically is equals to then d m by d x times i by b times q. Now, you can uh, recognize this particular parameter d m d x, d m d x is nothing but equals to v, this is the shear force, the rate of change of the bending moment along the length is equals to the shear force. So, what we can, sorry this is i times b. So, tau from this particular expression is equals to v times q divided by i into b. So, this is the expression for the horizontal shear stress, tau is equals to the vertical shear force v, q is the area, is the moment of the area which is above the section where we are trying to calculate the shearing stress. We are trying to calculate the shearing stress in the section which is at a distance of y 1 from the neutral axis and the area above y 1 from y 1 to h by 2 is the segmental area. The moment of that particular area with respect to the neutral axis will give us the value of q. So, we know the vertical shear force v, we can compute value of q, we can find out i, i is the moment of inertia of the section with respect to the neutral axis, b is the width. So, we can compute the value of the shearing stress and as you can observe from this particular expression that at a particular cross section b, i and b these three parameters are uh, constant or the same, only parameter which is varying is q, because q is dependent on y is the distance from the neutral axis, hence along the depth of the beam the shear stress will be varying, shear stress is dependent on q and q in turn is dependent on the distance y. So, uh, we can compute the value of the horizontal shear stress uh, at a particular section. Now, as we have seen that the horizontal shear stress is the complementary to the vertical shear stress. So, the vertical shear stress also will have equal in magnitude of that horizontal shear stress. So, once we compute this expression, so b q by i b, so that is same as that for the vertical shear stress as well. So, uh, from this particular shear formula which we have just derived, we find that the shearing stress expression for shearing stress tau is equals to v q by i b and this can be used to evaluate shear stress at any point in the cross section uh, of a rectangular beam. Now, rectangular beam means a beam having a rectangular cross section. Now, the term q is the first moment of the cross sectional area above the level at which we are looking for the shear stress and for a particular section. Uh, the shear stress varies with the parameter q, because b, i and b being these parameters being constant for a particular section, the only parameter which is varying is q and q is varying with respect to y 1, hence the shear stress also along the depth it varies and we get the distribution of the shear stress on the depth. Now, let us look into that how the shear stress varies across the depth. Now, we have obtained the value of the tau shearing stress as equals to v q by i b. Now, q for this particular beam as we have seen is integral y d a. Now, supposing in this particular rectangular section where the width is b and height is h for this beam, 
the neutral axis uh, divides the section in two halves. Now, we like to find out the shear stress across this particular section, which is at a distance of y 1 from the neutral axis. Hence, this is the segment which is under consideration, which is above the point above which we are computing the shearing stress. So, if we compute the value of q for this particular section, so q is equals to integral. Now, for d a, if we take a small strip over here having width d y, so d a is equals to b times d y and y and y varies from y 1 to h by 2. So, this is equals to b by 2 times uh, y square, y d y is y square by 2 and y square is uh, h square by 4 minus uh, y 1 square. So, this is the value of q. So, tau is equals to v by i b b by 2 times h square by 4 minus y 1 square. So, b b gets cancelled. So, this is equals to v by 2 i times h square by 4 minus y 1 square. Now, please note that the shearing stress tau varies uh, parabolically uh, across the depth it varies with y 1 square. Now, when y 1 is equals to 0, we get the maximum value of tau. So, that implies that at the neutral axis, we get the maximum value of the shearing stress. And as y 1 becomes h by 2 plus h by 2 or minus h by 2, the value of the shearing stress becomes 0. And as we have noticed earlier that at the top and the bottom of the beam, the value of the shearing stress is 0. So, if we plot the shear stress distribution, it uh, looks like this that at the top and the bottom the shear stress is 0 and over the depth it, uh, it is uh, varying parabolically and at the neutral axis we have the maximum value of shearing stress. And what is the magnitude of this maximum value if we call this as tau max? Tau max is equals to b by twice i into h square by 4. Now, if we write down that that uh, tau is equals to b h square by 8 i. Now, i for this particular rectangular section is equals to b h cube by 12. Now, if we substitute that, this is equals to v h square divided by 8 b h cube times 12. So, h square gets cancelled h. So, 4, 3, this is 2. So, this is equals to 3 by 2 v divided by now b times h is nothing but the cross sectional area. So, we write this as a. So, tau max the maximum value of the uh, shearing stress in a rectangular beam uh, is equals to we call this as tau max corresponding to the maximum shear force v max and 3 by 2 v max by a will give us the value of the tau max. And as you can see that across the depth, the shear stress varies for a rectangular beam in a parabolic manner and at the neutral axis, we get the maximum shear stress and at the extreme ends, the shearing stress is 0. And the value, the magnitude of the maximum shear stress is equal to 3 by 2 V max by A. Now, as uh, we had assumed in the beginning, if you remember that the shear stress, though it is varying uh, across the depth, along the width we assume that the shearing stress is constant. So, that means, at this particular uh, point, this is the value of the shearing stress along the width, this particular value is constant. So, as we had assumed in the beginning, two aspects, one is the shear stress acts along the direction of the shearing force and the shearing stress at a particular point is uniformly distributed across the width. Now, here one aspect uh, is to be remembered is that we really do not bother about the uh, sign of the stress as such. We consider that the direction of the shear stress is along the direction of the shear force. So, from the bending moment and shear force diagram, from the shear force diagram, we know the direction of the positive or negative shear and accordingly we take the di direction of the shearing stress as well. Now, with this uh, background, now let us look into then what are the steps that we need for evaluating the shearing stress at a particular point. 
Now, to evaluate the shear stress at a point in a beam, first of all we need to find out the vertical shear force V in the cross section where we are trying to find out the particular shear stress. That means, at a particular point where we are evaluating the shear stress, uh, we will have to find out that that particular point is in which section and at that particular section we will have to calculate the value of the shear force. And this we can carry out by uh, uh, drawing the shear force diagram. Once we draw the shear force diagram in the length of the beam, at different point we know the values of the shearing force and the point where we are interested to evaluate the shearing stress, we like to find out at that particular point where or the particular section where that particular point lies, what is the magnitude of the shearing force. That is the first thing. Secondly, in the cross section we will have to locate the neutral axis and we will have to compute the moment of inertia about this neutral axis. Then as you have seen that we will have to compute the value of Q which is the first moment of the area uh, of the section above or below the point of where we are trying to find out the shear stress. As we have seen in case of a rectangular beam, supposing if we take a section where we like to find out the shear stress, we concentrate on the area where we are trying to find out the shear stress either above or below of that particular segment and we take the moment of that area with respect to the neutral axis and that gives us the value of Q. So, once we know Q, so this gives us I, B is known and B is the width of the beam. So, that gives us the shear stress from this particular expression which is B Q by I B and we can find out the value of the shear stress at that particular point. Well, then with this background, let us look into uh, some of the examples on how to evaluate the uh, shear stress and the bending stress at a uh, particular point in a beam having different cross sections. Now, this is the example which uh, I had given to you last time that the cross section of the beam is uh, like this here is like an inverted U. This particular section is symmetrical with respect to y axis, but it is unsymmetrical with respect to the horizontal axis. Hence, first thing is we will have to compute or locate the position of the centroid of this particular section, so that we can find out the position of the neutral axis and consequently the value of the moment of inertia i. Now, fortunately in this particular problem, uh, these values are given the location of the neutral axis is indicated or the location of the centroid is known, which is 84 millimeter from the top of the uh, cross section and uh, the moment of inertia about the neutral axis is given as 75 into 10 to the power 6 uh, millimeter to the power 4. Now, what we will have to do is uh, here this particular beam is subjected to a concentrated load at this overhang part and over this uh, length there is a load of capital W per meter length. We need to evaluate the value of W so that the bending stresses are 60 mega Pascal in tension and 100 mega Pascal in compression. Now, we will have to find out the maximum value of load that we can apply in the beam so that the tensile stress do not go beyond 60 mega Pascal and the bending compressive stress does not go beyond 100 mega Pascal. Now, if we have to satisfy these two criteria, then what is the value of W that we can apply on this beam and that is what is to be determined. Now, to do that, let us find out first the where the maximum bending moment and the maximum shear force occurs. Of course, here we are dealing with only the bending stress. So, if we can know where the maximum bending moment is, we can compute the bending stresses. Now, as usual this particular beam is supported on a hinge over here and roller on this particular end. So, we will have a reactive force, vertical reactive force R B and a horizontal reactive force H B and here a vertical reactive force R C. Now, since we do not have any horizontal force, so H B equals to 0. So, we will be left with R B and R C and the values of R B and R C if you compute. Uh, from this R B plus R C is equals to W plus 4 times W, so 5 W and uh, if you take the moment of uh, the forces with respect to B, we can get the value of R C and consequently uh, the B. Now, if you compute the values of R B and R C, you will find that the values of R B and R C will be like this, R B is equals to 3.5 W and R C is equals to 1.5 W. Now, here if we like to plot the shear force diagram and if we 
take a cross section over here and take the free body of the left part, then we have the shear force and the bending moment and here we have the load W. Now, since at this particular segment we do not have any other load, so V is equals to W. So, we have a positive shear from uh, A to B and this, that is what is indicated over here and the magnitude of that positive shear is equals to W, V is equals to plus W over here. Now, if we take a free body diagram of this beam and cut the beam at this particular section and take the free body of this left part, then the free body diagram will look like this. This is a reactive force R B, here we have the load W and here we have the shear force B and the bending moment M and the load is distributed over this particular segment and let us call that this particular distance is x. So, uh, V plus R B minus W minus W into x is equals to 0. So, V is equals to minus R B plus W plus W into x. Now, R B is equals to 3.5 uh, W. Now, so shear force at this particular end beyond B, if we if we try to find out that uh, at any segment, let us say at a distance C, when x is equals to 4 meter, so this is uh, 4W plus W 5W and RB is 3.5W, so V is equals to plus 1.5W. So this is the shear force at the at the end C. And at point B, if we take W, x is equals to 0. So, R B is equals to minus 3.5 and W is uh, W. So, this is equals to minus 2.5 W. So, at point B, it is minus 2.5 W, at point C, it is 1.5 W. Now, since it is changing from minus to plus, so somewhere along the length, the shear force is equals to 0. Now, if we set the expression for shear as equals to 0 from this that V is equals to minus R V plus W plus W x, V is equals to 0 means it gives that R B is minus 3.5 W. So, minus 3.5 W plus W is minus 2.5 W. So, that gives us that minus 2.5 W is equals to 2.5 W times x is equals to 2.5 w. So, w w gets cancelled. So, x is equals to 2.5. So, it indicates that at a distance of x equals to 2.5, the shear force is 0. So, it changes sign from negative to, uh, negative to the positive and here the value is 1.5 w. And as we know that where the shear force is 0, at the corresponding point we will get a value uh, which is a maximum in the bending moment. Now, if we compute the value of the uh, bending moment for uh, different segments. If we take the moment uh, from this particular free body diagram, now at this particular free body you see m is equals to w times x. So, uh, when x is equals to 2, m is equals to now m and w they are in the same direction. So, m is equals to minus w times x. Now, when x is equals to 2 meters, m is equals to minus twice w. So, this is what is indicated over here, the magnitude of this moment is twice w. Now, uh, at this particular point again we have seen that the shear force is 0. Now, here we are getting uh, the change in the shear from positive to the negative sign. So, here we expect some uh, value higher value of the bending moment or as we have seen that the maximum bending moment occurs either where the shear force is 0 or the point where shear force changes its signs from the negative to the positive or the vice versa. Now, at this particular point if we compute the uh, magnitude of the bending moment, now the expression for the bending moment uh, for this particular free body diagram if we uh, look into is uh, equals to that m, m plus w is acting in the same direction. So, w times x plus 2 minus R B into x plus W into x square by 2, this is equals to 0. So, the bending moment M is equals to R B into x 
minus w x square by 2 minus w into x plus 2. Now, if we substitute the value of x as equals to 2.5, where the shear force is 0, we get the magnitude of m as 1.125 w and this is the maximum positive bending moment that occurs in this particular beam. So, you see we have two maximum values of the bending moment, one is the positive maximum, another is the negative maximum. So, the maximum positive bending moment is equals to 1.125 w and the maximum negative bending moment is equals to twice w. So, along the length of the beam as we see once we plot this bending moment diagram, it is clear that at two locations we get the maximum value, one is the maximum positive bending moment and at the other point we have the maximum negative moment. And we got to compute the value of the stresses in the beam corresponding to these two values of the positive and the negative bending moment and then we will have to take a decision on what load maximum load we can apply on this particular beam. Now, let us compute the value of the uh, stresses corresponding to these two bending moment. So, we have obtained that the maximum positive bending moment is equals to 1.125 w kilo Newton meter and maximum negative moment is equals to 2 w kilo Newton meter. Now, as you have uh, noted earlier that supposing if we have the negative bending moment, our negative bending moment sign is like this and this causes tension at the top and compression at the bottom. Now, if we calculate the bending stress sigma which is equals to m y by i. Now, i of this particular section is given over here which is 75 into 10 to the power 6 millimeter to the power 4. So, uh, the stress which will be acting at the top for this negative moment is the tension and tensile stress is 60 MPa whereby for the first case we have 60 is equals to m is twice w so much of kilo Newton meter times 10 to the power 6 so much of Newton millimeter multiplied by y, y is the neutral axis from the top distance which is 84 millimeter because maximum tensile stress will occur at the top fiber. This divided by i which is 75 into 10 to the power 6 so much of uh, mega Pascal. Now, from this if you compute the value of w, w comes as equals to 26 0.8 kilo Newton. So, this is one value of the W which we get corresponding to the maximum tensile stress corresponding to the maximum negative bending moment. Now, what is the value of the compressive stress correspondingly? Now, allowable compressive stress is 100 MPa. So, 100 corresponding to this moment is equals to twice W into 10 to the power 6 into 116 is the bottom fiber extreme fiber distance from the neutral axis. So, this is 116 divided by i which is 75 into 10 to the power 6. Now, from this if you compute the value of w, the w comes as equals to 32.33 MPa. So, corresponding to this uh, value of the bending moment which is twice w the maximum negative bending moment, we get the uh, tensile stress at the top and the compressive stress at the bottom. And corresponding to these limiting values of the tensile stress and the compressive stress, we get the two values of W which is 26.8 kilo Newton and 32.33 kilo Newton. Now, obviously, if we have this particular load applied on this beam, then the stress level in tension will be exceeding 60 and as a result uh, the beam will fail. So, we will have to limit ourselves to this load value of 26.8 kilo Newton meter. Now, before we take a decision on this particular loading, uh, we will have to check up with respect to the stresses that develop with respect to this positive bending moment. Now, let us compute the value of the stresses that uh, develops because of the positive bending moment which is of magnitude 1.125 w. Now, if we calculate the value of the stress, now the positive bending moment which is of this kind will cause a compression at the top and tension at the bottom. So, uh, if we compute the stress corresponding to the uh, one positive bending moment, the compressive stress, stress at the top is equals to 100. This is equals to 1.125 w into 10 to the power 6 so much of Newton uh, millimeter multiplied by the distance of the top fiber from the neutral axis which is 84 
divided by i which is 75 into 10 to the power 6. Now, from this if we calculate w, the value of w comes as 79.4 MPa, I mean so, so much of kilo Newton. Correspondingly, corresponding to this particular moment, if we compute the stress at the bottom which is a tensile stress which is 60, now 60 is equals to 1.125 W e to 10 to the power 6 into the distance of the bottom fiber from the neutral axis which is uh, 116 divided by I uh, which is equals to 75 into 10 to the power 6. Now, from this if you compute the value of W, the value of W comes as 34.5 kilo Newton. Now, out of uh, these two values we find that 34.5 kilo Newton is the low value and because if we apply 79.4 naturally the stress level here will exceed and the member will fail. Now, out of the four values now that uh, if you look into we have obtained four values, uh, one is 26.8 kilo Newton and 32.3 3 kilo Newton in earlier case corresponding to the maximum negative moment and corresponding to the positive moment we have 79.4 kilo Newton and 34.5 kilo Newton. Now, out of these four values we find that 26.8 is the uh, lowest value and this is the value which we will have to apply on the beam member so that the all other stresses are within limit. Now, if we apply a load more than 26.8 kilo Newton as we have uh, calculated for corresponding to the other uh, cases, then uh, the stress level in other values will exceed. Hence, the we will have to apply the minimum possible W's which we have evaluated out of these four cases and that is the maximum load that we can apply on the beam, so that the beam functions and safely carry the load what is indicated in the beam. Well, we have another example. In fact, this is the example which corresponds to the one which we have discussed today on the aspects of shear stress that a simply supported beam uh, is subjected to an uniformly distributed load of 10 kilo Newton per meter uh, including its own weight. Now, determine the normal and shear stress at point C. Now, at this particular point uh, we will have to find out the value of the normal stress which is generated due to bending and the value of the shear stress. Now, the point C is at a distance of 150 millimeter from the bottom fiber. That means, that this is the position of the neutral axis because it is symmetrical. So, point C is somewhere here along this length which is uh, 50 millimeter from this neutral axis. So, we will have to compute the normal stress and the shearing stress. Also, we will have to find out the value of the maximum normal and the maximum shear stress. Now, Naturally, to compute the value of maximum normal and the maximum shear stress, we will have to know uh, along the length of the beam at which point you have the maximum bending moment and the maximum shear force. And to ascertain the value of the maximum bending moment and the maximum shear force, you will have to draw the bending moment and shear force diagram and then correspondingly you can find out where the maximum bending moment and the maximum shear stress is occurring. Now, uh, as usual we have this particular N, uh, N is on hinge. So, you have the vertical and the horizontal reaction which is R A and H A. Now, you have uh, the vertical reactive force R B over here. So, as is well you got to compute the value of R A and R B and uh, of course, the H A is equals to 0 because you do not have any horizontal force in this particular member. Now, this particular member is uh, symmetrically uh, loaded with symmetrical supports as uh, uh, we have seen earlier that when you have uniformly distributed load, uh, the reactive values will be equal R A is equals to R B and that is equals to the uniformly distributed load 10 multiplied by the length of the beam by 2. So, this is equals to 15 kilo Newton. So, the reactive values will be equals to 15 kilo Newton. In fact, this we can uh, evaluate as we have done earlier that R A plus R B equals to 10 times 3 and if we take the moment of the forces with respect to one of the supports, you can get the value of one of the reactions. So, these are the reactive values H A is 0, R A is 15 and R B is 15. Now, let us uh, look into the shear force and bending moment diagram of this particular uh, beam along the length 
so that we can compute the value of the stresses. Now, uh, R A we have uh, obtained as 15, R B also as 15. Now, if we take a free body diagram of this particular member on the left hand segment, uh, we have the support uh, reaction R A and on this we have the shear force V and the moment M. So, V plus R A equals to 0, so V is equals to minus R A. So, we have the 15 kilo Newton negative as the shear force over here. Now, since there are no other loads acting on this particular B member, so uh, B uh, at uh, well we have B minus at this particular segment which is at a distance of x, we have uniformly distributed load also. So, minus R A plus the 10 kilo Newton times x. So, at x equals to 0, the V is R A, this is the uh, shear force. Now, as we go along the length, uh, the value of x changes and consequently the there is a change in the shear. Now, as you can see that when x is equals to half the length is 1.5 then shear force becomes 0. So, at the central point the shear force uh, crosses the baseline and goes to the other side and it becomes a positive shear over here. If you x if you take the value of x as 3 meters then you get the value of v as equals to plus 15. So, from minus 15 to plus 15 it changes and at the central point it becomes 0 which is because of the symmetrical loading. And this uh, kind of distribution of the shear force we had seen it earlier that if you have a simply supported beam subjected to uniformly distributed load, then uh, the half the total load is on one support and gradually it varies becomes 0 at the center and goes to the other end. Now, also if you compute the bending moment m, the value of the bending moment m is equals to uh, R a into x minus w x square by 2. Now, R a is equals to 15. So, 15 times x minus w is 10, so 5 x square. Now, at the center where x equals to 1.5, if you compute the value of the bending moment will be equals to 11.25 kilo Newton meter. So, that is the maximum bending moment that we get corresponding to this 0 C R force. Now, what we got to uh, evaluate in this particular problem is, we will have to find out the maximum bending stress and the maximum uh, shearing stress. Now, from these particular diagrams, we can see that the maximum value of the bending moment is equals to 11.25 kilo Newton meter and the maximum value of the shear, shear force which is acting at the support is equals to 15 kilo Newton. And we got to compute the value of the uh, bending stress and the shear stress at point C and maximum value of the bending moment at point C is equals to 6.25 kilo Newton meter and the value of the shear stress at point C is equals to 10 kilo Newton. So, corresponding to these values of the shear force and the bending moment, if we compute the stresses, then the stress and the moment becomes like this. Now, the value of bending moment or the bending stress, the normal stress say at C, first let us calculate at C at C the bending stress is equals to m y by i and at C moment is 6.25 kilo Newton meter. So, this is 6.25 into 10 to the power 6 into y, y is at a distance of 50 from the neutral axis because this is 150 from the bottom. So, this is 50 divided by i, i is equals to uh, 100 into 200 cube by 12. And this if we compute the value of the uh, sigma, this comes as 4.7 MPa. Now, if we compute the value of the shearing stress at this particular point, now tau is equals to V Q by I B. Now, V we know is 10 kilo Newton at this particular section, Q is equals to A Y bar or integral uh, Y D Y, Y D A. Now, this if you calculate we will have to calc we will have to take the segment above the place where we are evaluating the shear stress. Now, this is the place where we are evaluating the shear stress. So, we got to compute this particular segment and this particular segment area is equals to 100 times 50. So, Q is equals to 100 times 50 is the area 
and its own CG is 25 from the top. So, from the neutral axis it is 75. So, this multiplied by 75 is Q and I again is 100 into 200 cube by 12 and B is equals to 100. So, if you substitute this you get the value of tau as equals to 0 0.5625 MPa. So, this is the value of the shearing stress that you get at point C. Now, corresponding to the maximum value of the bending moment and the mass maximum value of the shear force, if you compute the uh, stresses, we get the values uh, like this that bending, bending stress sigma again as m y by i and m max is equal to 11.25 into 10 to the power 6 and y is the extreme point which is uh, the maximum value is equal to 100 and correspondingly 100 times 200 cube by 12. So, this gives us the value of the bending stress and if you compute this comes as 16.875 MPa. Now, for a rectangular section as you know that the maximum shear stress tau max is equal to 3 by 2 V max by area. Now, V max here is 15 kilo Newton. So, if an area is equal to 100 multiplied by 200. So, if we substitute these values the maximum shear stress comes as 1.125 MPa. So, at point C we can compute the value of the bending stress and the normal stress I mean normal stress and the shearing stress and the maximum value of the normal stress and the shearing stress from this particular uh, diagram. Now, we have another problem wherein uh, the beam which is shown over here we will have to find out the stress at a point which is uh, 30 millimeter above the bottom of the beam at section C. That means, we will have to compute the value of the shearing stress at this particular point and at this location which is at a distance of uh, 30 millimeter from the bottom. Now, here the cross section is symmetrical again with respect to the vertical axis. Now, here we have two rectangular components joined together and neutral axis is located at a distance of 62.5 millimeter from the bottom fiber and the neutral the moment of inertia is indicated over here. Now, here of course, we need not calculate the uh, shear force of the bending moment diagram as such, but we can uh, find out the shear force diagram and from which we can compute the value of the shear stress. Now, at this particular location as we can see that the value of the shear force is equal to 6.67 kilo Newton and correspondingly if we calculate the value of the shear stress which is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the power 3 this is V times Q by I B. Now, B in this particular case if you look into is equals to 100. So, if we compute the value of the shear stress tau is equals to 6.67 into 10 to the power 3 multiplied by uh, Q which is uh, equals to uh, 100 because this is the section which we are looking into this is 100 times 30 and this is 62.5 minus 15 which is equals to 47.5 divided by I times B which is 100. If you compute that this comes as 0.5 MPa. Well, uh, you have another problem uh, you look into this particular problem that a beam which is subjected to two concentrated load you got to compute the maximum value of B. So, that the bending stress does not exceed 60 MPa and shearing stress does not exceed uh, 10 MPa. So, uh, we will uh, look into this particular problem uh, next time. Now, to summarize then in this particular lesson we have included uh, the concept of the previous lesson. We have looked into the concept of shear stress in beams with rectangular cross sections. Uh, we have looked into the derivation of equation for shear stress in beams and we have looked into some examples to evaluate shear stresses in beams. Now, the questions uh, given for you are what are the assumptions made in deriving the shear formula? what is the limitation of shear stress formula and what is the value of shear stress in a cantilever beam subjected to a moment at its tip and uh, we will look into the answers of these questions in the next lesson. Thank you very much. Okay.